what Google is doing? How do you assess what they're doing when you're looking at it? Because there'll be competitors at some point. These are all um, eventual competitors. Well, you know, I think what, what Google's, I mean, Google's done a great job of showing the potential of autonomous transport. Right. Um, but they're, they're, not a, they're not a car company, so they would potentially you know, license their technology to other car companies. And I think they announced something with uh, Fiat. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I, I wouldn't say you know, Google's a competitor um, because they, they're not a car company. They, we would compete with somebody perhaps that they license technology to, but not to them directly. Right. Um, Apple? Uh, yeah, that, that'll be more direct. That'll Absolutely. be more direct? Yeah. You can tell that by the hiring pattern and yeah, yeah, that kind absolutely. of stuff? Yeah. So what do you, okay, so they're gonna Even be more direct. How do you assess it? Um, I mean, I, I say like, you know, I, I, I think it's great that they're doing this and um, I, um, you know, I hope they, I hope it works out. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the time frame for them, do you think? Um, I don't know. I mean, um, I, I think they should have uh, um, embarked upon this project sooner, actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, that, uh, um, but I don't know. I don't know when they. I mean, they have, you know, they don't share with me the details of their mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. production plans. But um, I, I, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think they'll be in volume production sooner than maybe 2020, that would be like the soonest. And that's, is that too late? When you say they should have embarked sooner, is, tw is that because 2020 would be too late to stop you or beat you or compete with you or what? No, it's just like it's a missed opportunity. It's just a, that they, it's, it's. Um, It'll be over by 2020? No, no, it's, not, it's, not, it's just like it's, it's, it's a couple of years. I think they'll, they'll probably make a good car and uh, probably be successful. The car industry is very big, so it's not as though there's, um, you know, one company to the exclusion of others. Um, I mean, there's like a dozen car companies in the world of, of, of significance. So, uh, and the, the most that any company has is approximately 10% market share. So it's, it's not like, um, you know, somebody comes up with a car and they're suddenly like, they kill everyone else. It's not, not that way. Um, and, and the sheer scale of automotive manufacturing is, is, is just, it's hard to appreciate until you see the plants. I mean, they're gigantic. Yeah, like the industrial, I have seen the plants. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the sheer size of the industrial infrastructure is, is staggering. Not just the assembly plant, but everything else that goes. Yeah, the supply chain, exactly. The assembly plant is just a the little engine tip plant. of the iceberg, really. Mm -hmm. yeah, the the assembly plant is literally tip of the iceberg. Phenomenal. The, the supply chain is, um, you know, once you go to tier two, tier three, tier four suppliers, mm -hmm. um, that's probably an order of magnitude more uh, so, so, okay, so, so you think Google will not be a competitor, Apple probably will be a direct competitor. Yeah, yeah, sure. What about the car companies? The, the, yeah, the I think they'll all, they'll all be competitors, yeah, sure. Who do you see out there that has done a nice job so far? Mercedes or? GM of what? Of, of, what? of a competitive car. Of the incumbents. Um, a potentially competitive car, I guess. I mean, I don't think anyone's, any of the car companies thus far have made um, a really great electric car. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell me if, I'm, if you disagree, um, but uh, I don't think yet that any of them have made a great electric car. Okay. And they, you know, presumably will continue to improve on what they've done so far, and, and then at some point they may make a car that's, that, that's uh, you know, that, that's a great car, but no, they haven't done that yet. Can I ask you about so. batteries for a second? Uh, yeah, sure. So you're building this gigafactory, right? You've, it's built. It's, well, it's not completely built. But, okay, but it, part but of it's up and running. A big chunk of it's built, yeah. Part of it's, it's up and running. It's a really gigantic thing. It's like when the gigafactory's done, it'll be the largest footprint building of any kind in the world. Of any kind, not just factories, it literally of any What is kind. this, the largest rocket, the largest building? I mean, I, <laughs> Well, I mean, I think this, it's not scale for scale's sake. It's just like if you say, well, we want to accomplish these goals, then, um, then you kind of have to be, make a big thing. So, okay. Um, You've got this big thing. It's this big, giant building. Right. Yeah. It's going to make batteries. The batteries it's going to make are 
Well, Nick, Nick, we're going to have, have an opening. Well, it's not technically an opening party since it's been operating for a little while, but we're going to have a party soon. You guys maybe want to come. Okay. We can come? All right, yeah, good. Sure. We'll come to the can battery they, party. It's pretty, but they can't I, I come. Love it's worth seeing. This they is can't like, come, right? Just this this, this yeah. is crazy. No. <laughs> This is like an alien dreadnought. It's really okay. nutty. Because I love a battery party, but yeah, um, <laughs> right. But but, but 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 talk but about where it's going. Are these lithium-ion batteries? Yeah, yeah, sure. So they're the same batteries that's in no. our phone. No. no. <laughs> explain, please explain. Yeah. So, so lithium. You, have you made a, a battery breakthrough? Is something I'm interested in. Um, yeah, I mean, generally, the I mean, there's there's so much nonsense out there about batteries. Like, about you can believe about one percent of what you read. Um, on a, you know, maybe. Um, uh, lithium ion covers a very broad range of technologies. Um, and you can have an enormous difference in the power density and the energy density and the cycle life um, between one chemistry and another. They can be really enormously different. Um, so uh, what you really actually want to ask is what is the cathode and what is the anode? Right. Um, so in our case, that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I well, just put it in the. The, the lithium is actually two percent of the cell mass. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like the salt in the salad. It's it's a very small um, amount of the cell mass and a fairly small amount of the cost. Um, but it sounds like it's big because it's called lithium ion. But it it, it really like our battery should be called nickel graphite because uh, it's mostly nickel and graphite. Okay, and um, it's nickel, cobalt, aluminum. But battery you know, little things in graphite with a silicon oxide layer. Battery like efficiency or power that you know the power that you can store in a certain uh, mass seems to be move very slowly, at least compared to you know we're used to Moore's law pushing uh, integrated circuits faster. Batteries kind of are always in our consumer devices always lagging behind. In your, you've built this giant thing, the biggest building in the world it's ever seen. It's not fully built, but yes, it's you're building it. Pretty the big biggest chunk building is built, in the world so, yeah, ever yeah. seen. Yeah. Uh, to make batteries, your whole business depends on batteries in these cars. Have you figured out a way to do some significant uh, increase in the yield of energy from a given amount of of space in the battery? Well, uh, yeah, I mean the the. the the energy density is increasing sort of maybe on the order of like five-ish percent per year. Um, and it doesn't sound like much, but you add that up over a number of years with compound interest, it ends up being quite, quite a significant number. Um, and a lot of people sort of think that, oh, well, we just sort of cobbled together some um, laptop batteries and somehow made a great car. But if it was that easy, then I think we would have quite a few competitors who did the same thing. But, but it's, it's, it's really quite, quite a lot harder than that. Um, the, it, it's a cylindrical form, form factor, but the internals of the battery are quite different from what you would find in, uh, in a laptop. Um, and, uh, and, and, and will be increasingly different with the, what's built at the Gigafactory, which is highly optimized for automotive. Um, and. Um, and with, has improved energy density, but but mostly it's not the energy density that's the issue because you know you can buy if you buy a Model S today, um, the range is um, around 300 miles, um, and and that, yeah, that's quite a lot. Um, so it's pretty rare that people really need to go more than 300 miles at a time stopping. without stopping. Right. You know. Um, so I don't think we really have a range issue. And we could make a 400-mile range car today. Like, that wouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, the, the, so what, what really matters is decreasing the cost uh, per unit of energy of the battery packs that, okay. so you can make the car affordable. That's actually the, the, the important thing. Um, so there's, and there's really two main, main dimensions along which uh, cost optimization and making something available to the national market can be achieved. One is design iteration, going through multiple versions of something. And then the other is economies of scale. Um, and you kind of need both of those, those things in order to make a compelling mass market uh, product. And you look at like cell phones and how many design iterations have we gone through with cell phones. Um, and, and then and, 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 what, and look at the scale at which they're, they're made, which is enormous. Uh, and that's what enables everyone to have a supercomputer in their pocket. Um, so speaking of that, the sales, when we're talking about the sales, you have booked how many orders for? 
It's on the order of 400,000. 400,000. So 400, obviously, yeah, it's, it's, cons it's, consumer yeah. interest and a promise. A lot of it around you, around the idea of you and Tesla and the excitement. They're yeah, not it booking. Was, it was quite surprising, actually. I mean, I, the because um, we didn't do any advertising or there was no guerrilla marketing or anything. It was just basically like, yeah, we're going to have this webcast. There was only there were only about a thousand people in the audience, um, and um, it really caught us by surprise. But I think you know when, when you have a product that really resonates with with customers, the word of mouth uh, grows like wildfire. 